Hello everyone, and welcome to our series of webinars featuring tips and tricks for Autodesk Inventor. My name is Dan Williams, and I'm a Manufacturing Applications Engineer for Repro Products Incorporated. Positional representations provide the designer an option to define noteworthy index positions or configurations of assemblies. We will look at how these can be used again in the context of a larger referencing assembly to define index positions for that assembly. Also, how positional representations can be utilized in the creation of a special type of drawing called an overlay view. We just discussed how the flexible and adaptive properties of subassemblies allow us to have Inventor evaluate the degrees of freedom of subassemblies within the context of a larger assembly. But neither one of those solutions really give us the ability to define index positions for those subassemblies. Obviously, there are certain more important milestone index positions for subassemblies that indicate range of motion and things like that. And uh, positional representations are, are really a good solution for that. If we look back at our assembly again, notice that when I go back and re-enable that stroke assembly constraint, and I right-click over it, there is an option missing right here. And that option only becomes available if I create a positional representation to accept it. So here in the cylinder itself, I'm going to create a positional representation. And I'm going to call this new positional representation compressed. And I'll create another positional representation. This one I'll call extended. Now that I've defined some positional representations beyond just the master positional representation, if I come back down here to the stroke assembly constraint, notice that I have an extra option here now. Well, if I select a specific positional representation and make it current, and I can come down here to the new option and define a new position for that assembly at that positional representation. In this case, I'm going to say the extended position is at 150 millimeters. Now I'll activate the compressed positional representation. And I'll say that at that position, the assembly constraint should be equal to zero. So that now I can toggle between extended and compressed for each instance of that subassembly. So what the positional rep representation actually captures is some combination of assembly constraint overrides. I can actually have multiple constraints overridden per positional representation. Something else that a positional representation can capture is the combination of positional representations of subassemblies in an assembly. So I can actually go up to the top level of the assembly and create three new positional representations. One we'll call down. Another we'll call up one. I'm slow double clicking on these to rename them. And up three, or up two rather. Now that I have positional representations, I'll activate the down positional representation, and then go to each of the cylinders and select the positional representation I want to use for the down positional representation of the of the top assembly. So for each of these, I'll select the compressed positional representation. And then for the up one 
positional representation. Cylinder 1 will continue to be compressed. Cylinder 2 will be extended. But cylinder 3 will continue to be compressed. Finally, for the top assembly positional representation of two, all positional, the positional representation for cylinder one will be compressed. And then for cylinders two and three, will be extended. So that now I can describe three different positional representations for the top level assembly. One application for this is the creation of something called an overlay view. So I'll go ahead and start a new drawing. We'll use an ANSI inch drawing. And in this drawing I'll go ahead and create a base view of our assembly. Let's use quarter scale. And for our positional representation of the base view, we'll use down. Now I can mouse over that view till the view border highlights, right click, and create an overlay view. In this overlay view, I'll use the positional representation of one. And I'll repeat the process to create another overlay using positional representation of two. And in this way, we can describe ranges of motion. Uh, we can even dimension between different positional representations. So you can see how useful positional representations can be in describing index positions for assemblies. Thanks again for joining us for this Inventor Tips and Tricks webinar. If you found anything useful, if you'd like more, then certainly we'd like to hear from you. You can contact us at www.reproproducts.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. My name is Dan Williams. I'm a manufacturing applications engineer here at Repro Products.